Hey kids, it's the Mr. Flair here, hope you're well. An absolutely gorgeous evening to be out on a motorcycle. It's been a lovely day today. It's something like 25 degrees still. Uh, and I'm on a bike that uh, I'm going to be getting used to over the next few weeks actually, because KTM UK have let me uh, buy this bike. This is a uh, RC390, the baby uh, sports bike. And they uh, they said, did I want to uh, have a go at it and get to know it a bit better than just having a you know an hour's test ride, which is what I have been doing on KTM's up till now. So of course I said yes. So I'm really looking forward to getting to know the bike. If you stick around and stay tuned for the next couple of minutes, this will be my first impressions review of the KTM RC390. So this is a great fun bit of uh, straight road actually. This is uh, the road that comes out of Stowe School on the way to Buckingham. And it's kind of a roller coaster of a road in a dead straight line. So uh, good fun this, but you never quite know what's going to come over these crests. Anyway, I uh, digress. So the KTM RC390 then. Uh, as I say, it's not actually a 390cc, it's about 370cc uh, and weight wise it's uh, really lightweight. I'll go through the details of the specs when I do the walk around uh, a little bit later on in the review. Uh, but initial thoughts on the bike, really uh, really nice, I mean it's comfortable. I'm, I'm kind of comparing it in my mind to the Yamaha R3 which I rode quite recently, which I really love because it had lots of the same sort of characteristics. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out. One of the big differences between this and the Yamaha, of course, is that this is a single cylinder thumper. And uh, when I say thumper, that's because people always call single cylinder box thumpers, don't they? But uh, the boffins at KTM in Austria have done something clever with this because the engine is actually pretty smooth when you consider the size of that big old piston that's thrashing up and down. It's, uh, you know, there's not a lot of vibration. It's, uh, it's pretty smooth as singles go, I have to say. And it's got bags of torque kind of everywhere. It doesn't just, you know, lift off the line quickly and then run out of puff. It's just in real world speeds, it, uh, it feels like it's got something to give you everywhere. And uh, if you've been watching the channel too, I've been riding quite a lot of big litre sports bikes of late. And um, one of the criticisms I've had of all of them really is they're just a bit too performant for the road. Well, this is the other way. I've always been a fan of, uh, of smaller capacity machines. And this is one of those bikes that's sort of straight in that category of bikes that've got enough power to have fun, but not so much power that you're going to end up losing your license or worse. You really can ride this at the sort of limits of the engine. Uh, it's rewarding and is fun, but you're not doing stupid speeds. So I love it for that. So while I'm wending my way back home here, let's uh, go over some of the practicalities of the machine then. Uh, first thing that strikes me when you get on it is it's really very comfortable. It's got a really big seat on it and uh, I think, uh, you know, I've ridden quite a lot of KTMs now and the first thing I usually say is it's uncomfortable. Well this one isn't, they've obviously put some thought into the seat. Uh, the padding feels quite nice and it's, uh, you know, at the back end of the seat it's quite wide so there's a big area to put your bum. But actually it's a very narrow bike of course because it's a single cylinder so they've got that balance just right on the comfort there. And then the other thing, given it's a sports bike, um, the handlebars are very wide. It's got this massive uh, yoke arrangement on here, uh, which, uh, okay, it might not be classic sports bike, it's not ag aggressive, but it does make it comfortable. And it means if you're gonna buy one of these bikes and it's your only bike, and I assume, you know, the sort of market this is aimed at is uh, maybe a youngster that this is the only bike uh, that they have, then actually this makes it a very practical bike. You could ride to work on it, you could tour on it, and uh, you're gonna be comfortable. I, you know, at the moment, I'm not tucked down, I'm sitting quite upright on the machine, not bolt upright. The legs are tucked underneath me in quite a sporty position. Um, but it's not uncomfortable at all. There's not a lot of weight on my wrists. You could ride this for, you know, a good few hours on end uh, and it wouldn't be a problem at all. The other thing that uh, I noticed very quickly on this is that the mirrors, which are actually redesigned this year on this bike, they're much bigger than the previous year's uh, mirrors, uh, they are massive and they, whilst they are a bit of a, an odd design, I mean looking at them from the back here they look really weird the way these stalks are done, but they, they're perfectly functional I have to say, you get a good view behind and at the end of the day that's what you want at your mirrors, so thumbs up for the view at the mirrors. So this is the town of Buckingham at uh, knocking off from work time. So it's quite a good test of the bike in traffic. And because of its lightweight, it's uh, an absolute joy to ride. Uh, it's a warm day today, as I say, and uh, the fan has uh, cut in to cool her down. It's quite noisy, actually. Not a problem, I just mention it, because uh, often you don't notice when the fan's cut in, but it has cut in on this one. There is a little bit of heat, actually, coming up from the engine that I can feel, but uh, I'm, as I say, it is a hot day, so it's amplified by that. and. Uh, I'm very used to my uh, Panigale, which is a bike that absolutely cooks your backside, so actually to me it feels fine. 
uh, and in the UK climate actually in the winter that's a positive plus point but uh, yeah it's quite warm around the posterior right let's do that sneaky thing that motorcycles can do get past traffic I do love that about bikes why isn't everybody commuting on bikes It's got a really usable bit of shove, this uh, bike. You just need to squirt away from traffic in a town sort of setting like this. It's very easy to do. Right, I'm going down this way. Yeah, for cutting through traffic, no problem. The brakes on this uh, seem pretty good, actually. It's got a single disc on the front, which made me think that it might be a bit, uh, a bit rubbish. But actually, the, uh, I'm told this year the disc has been made bigger, so obviously it wasn't up to snuff before, but it feels absolutely fine now. Um, and in fact, if I didn't know, hello sir, I would have said it was a, a dual disc setup. The brakes are quite good actually. Well, that's the front brake, let's try the back brake. Oh yeah, the back brake is alright as well. I've just noticed it's got a. Uh, a change up light which is quite fun <laughs> so if you look in here this uh, light here when you get to uh, you know you're above the power band that'll glow red so let me just slow down a bit in fact let's change down here we go second gear you see red in fact you can keep it on red look <laughs> excellent well I can imagine having fun trying to ride with that constantly on <laughs> handles really nicely in these uh, nice sweepy roads the suspension is uh, quite plush not at all you know jarring of your fillings or anything like that great I find myself behind white van man okay silver van but the effect is the same what a beautiful evening for a ride even beyond white van man it's all right gearbox is nice and positive it's not uh, I wouldn't say it's the smoothest box in the world, but it's, uh, you know, you know when you've got it into gear, and I'm not getting false neutrals or missing gears, so absolutely nothing wrong with it at all. Oh, good, it's turning off. What a result. It's got a really nice note to the exhaust on this. They've uh, done quite a good job on the Euro 4 front, in that they've hidden, I'll show you when we do the walk around, that they've hidden the, um, the massive... A box of tricks that these exhausts tend to come with now sort of within the um, engine part of the frame if that makes sense and done a good job of hiding it and it's actually quite a small exhaust pipe that comes out but again that's another change from last year's bike where it used to have just a little uh, underslung side exiting pipe but this one doesn't look too bad for a euro 4 monstrosity it's a shame i happened to pick this time of day to be uh, riding back actually because uh, obviously there's a lot of traffic about but this road is an absolute beauty normally. Mind you, in this warm temperature, you've got plenty of grips, grip in the tyre, and uh, it just feels lovely cruising around here. Again, normal road riding speeds, but actually, on a bike like this, it feels like you're absolutely flying. Really stable, actually, in the turns. The geometry is such that you know you you set the turn up and round she tracks really nice and. Uh, true there's none of that sort of wavering around or unstableness that you feel on some bikes it feels like you can really chuck it to the corners if you want to right let me find somewhere to stop and show you around the bike well this is all very oldie worldy this is the uh, lovely little town of Winslow in Buckinghamshire check out some of these thatches very nice like that sort of thing pleased to say that the uh, the switch gear on here is that is the proper stuff, uh, as I call it. It's not that uh, PCB stuff. They're proper switches that you know when you've moved them. They're not just pressing on contacts on a printed circuit board. They're big, man-sized, tactilely lovely switches that you know when you've activated them. Right, it says there, there's a picnic spot up here in 400 yards. That could be my place to do a walk around. This will do nicely. Nice and easy to find neutral. Decent side stand. There we go. Right, here she is then. KTM RC390. Resplendent in all its orangey glory. I have to say, a bit like the um, 
Yamahas, the paint finish on here is absolutely stupendous. They've, I don't know if they've just got a lot of layers on it or lacquer or what, but the, the actual finish of the bike is really lovely. Anyway, I'll get the other camera out and uh, we'll do a little walk around and I'll talk you through the spec. Okay, here we go. Right, so here we have then the KTM RC390, the 2017 model. A few changes this year, as I mentioned. Number one, that exhaust, uh, which I think they've done a pretty good job on. Let's get a little close up of that because it's not a hideously huge monstrosity. It used to be an underslung affair, but they've uh, managed to engineer the, the big muffler box or whatever it's called actually behind the engine there so it makes it quite neat and tidy and doesn't look as terrible as uh, some other bikes that uh, we could mention but it uh, sounds good as well uh, the other thing they've done is they've changed the front brake disc they've made it a bit bigger uh, which uh, well you can't really see it in there but it's, uh, it works really well as I, as I mentioned as I was riding it there's no problem with the brakes whatsoever uh, it's got a ride by wire throttle now as well and there's some new graphics paint job is slightly different but it looks really smart uh, close up the paint is really lustrous I think the, uh, the finish on this and the fit and finish generally is great and with that orange frame as well looks really cool uh, KTM sometimes the looks can be a bit odd I mean the front end of it I'm not sure if I like it or not I actually like it more in the flesh than when I just saw the pictures of it but uh, you know it's got this uh, arrangement at the front where the screen sort of wraps around the front which is quite clever I suppose but I'm not sure if I like the looks of that or not and then the two projector headlights but uh, I mean, you're not looking at the bike when you're riding it, of course, and that's just a purely a matter of personal taste. Actually, in the flesh, it's a much nicer looking bike than I anticipated. I'd only ever seen these in pictures before, uh, but actually the, you know, the quality of the build of it is really nice. Back end looks good, it's got a really nice light on the back. The switch gear feels quality, as I mentioned. Uh, yeah, nice bike. Anyway, back to the spec. So, KTM described this as a pure sports bike stripped of everything but the essentials, uh, which are, you know, I would concur with. Uh, the engine, as I said, single cylinder. It's actually 373cc unit. Uh, puts out, uh, well, according to the website, 32 kilowatts, which uh, I looked up actually is 43 brake horsepower in the old bunny. Uh, the seat height 820 millimeters, which sounds quite high, but because it's such a narrow bike, it being a single cylinder machine, uh, actually it's very, very easy to get your feet flat on the floor. And it's so uh, light, dry, it's 147 kilograms, amazingly light bike. Then uh, there is absolutely no problem of feeling, you know, unstable or anything like that on the bike. It's very, very uh, user friendly in that respect. Tank capacity 10 liters. Uh, it's got uh, no fancy electronics except, of course, as all uh, Euro 4 compliant bikes have to have ABS. So this has got uh, Bosch ABS on it, what they describe as Bosch two-channel ABS. Uh, I suspect all that means is it works on the front and back wheel. <laughs> I don't actually know, but that's uh, that was on the website. And um, price, well, according to uh, one of the dealers I looked at, PH Motorcycles, they're selling them for five thousand and ninety-nine. So really good price for a bike that really does feel premium build quality when you look at it closely and you're riding it this does not feel like a bike that has been built down to a price it's uh, it really is a premium and proper bit of kit okay uh, that's enough I think I'll uh, jump back on ride a bit more oh. okay the view from the cockpit when you start up the usual ready to race thing going on uh, and as you can see this has got uh, just a, a monochrome LCD uh, display on it. Not, not as fancy as uh, some of the other bikes that they're bringing out this year, but perfectly functional. It's got everything you need there. Sounds great when you start her up. Right, nothing about. Let's avoid that crater of a pothole. Oh, all the white van comes away. Let's get out of here. up to speed and it's you know it's a useful speed even though it's only a small engine you're not uh, it's not like you are on my CRF where if you get stuck behind something you're stuck behind it until they turn off or go away you have actually got a bit of power here that you can overtake I think the bike you know well it has got a top speed of well over 100 miles now so you've got usable power there I do love lightweight bikes and this one uh, really carries its light weight really well it's uh, almost bicycle like but a lot more stable in the corners it has to be said so uh, the display there the uh, LCD has everything you need to know on it I haven't uh, had a chance to oh nice AC Cobra haven't had a chance yet to properly work out what everything does there's a button there that says uh, mode and another one that says set 
Uh, don't be fooled by the mode button, this bike doesn't have uh, different engine modes, that just changes, I suspect, things like trip counters and so on, and the computer that you can see on here, with the gas mileage and what have you. Um, but I'll have a play with that over the next few days, but it's certainly very clear, you can see what speed you're doing very clearly, RPM at the top, everything you need to know. So if you do tuck down on the bike, I'm just seeing what the wind protection is like off this really tiny screen, and uh, to be honest, there's not a lot of protection. The good news is the uh, wind that is coming off the screen onto my helmet is clear. It's not turbulent air, so I'm not being buffeted about. Uh, but to be honest, it's not offering me a lot of wind protection, that screen. It's, uh, it's a bit more like riding a naked bike, but uh, it's a nice smooth airflow, so it's not an issue at all. I, I'm perfectly happy uh, with riding naked bikes. I've not got a lot of um, wind impact on my chest and so on, to be fair. Uh, I don't think uh, it's wind is going to be an issue. <laughs> careful with that. I don't think that uh, being buffeted by the wind is going to be an issue on this bike. It all feels nice and smooth. This is a bike uh, where you do have to work the gearbox somewhat, which is I think part of the fun of riding actually. But uh, if you're in too high gear at too slow a speed, the big old single cylinder engine does let you know. So uh, it's good actually because I guess it teaches you how to ride a bike properly. I think so. Another lovely little town. Everywhere always looks so much better when the sun's out, doesn't it? Ah, white van man ahead is turning off. What a stroke of luck. So I must just take this uh, opportunity to thank Luke of KTM UK for letting me borrow the bike uh, for a couple of weeks. Really looking forward to thrashing the pants of it, quite frankly, over the next few days and uh, enjoying it some more. And seeing what else I can learn about it. When you get a bike for a little bit longer, you can, uh, you know, properly get under the skin of it and. Uh, so it's great that uh, KTM have made contact so that I could do that, so thanks to those guys. So that's uh, pretty much it for my uh, first impressions video, the uh, KTM RC390, as you can tell. Uh, on this first ride, absolutely love the bike. It's uh, light and flickable, fun, lovely in the corners. It's got uh, enough power for real world use, uh, easy to ride, good quality, uh, it seems, in terms of its fit and finish. Mirrors work well, brakes work fine, engine's eager, sounds good too. At the moment, there's not too much not to like about it. I guess the only thing that sticks out is the kind of quirky looks of it. I know they're not uh, maybe to everybody's tastes. What I would say though is don't write them off if you don't like the looks of it. Because in the flesh, they do actually look much better than uh, in pictures. When uh, I was offered the chance to borrow the bike, I was sort of thinking, oh actually, I'm not too sure I like the looks of those. I don't think I'm going to like it. But actually, once you ride it, the kind of looks grow on you. I found this before, it's weird how that happens, uh, and actually I'm starting to like looks a bit more. But anyway, that's just me, that's a that's a personal taste thing. Okay, so uh, I'm going to write the pants off this to say for the next few days, I shall uh, give you an update uh, at the end of the loan period and let you know anything else that I've uh, learnt about the bike. But uh, in the meantime, that's it for now, and I look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Missing and Flying. Cheerio.